Yes, we should start. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you again, Saish, for uh, inviting me over. And uh, uh, I'm obviously here because uh, of Saish. So thanks to you again. And I, I know there are a lot of curious kids who are here, right? And uh, what we're going to talk about. One of the things I did send out earlier is uh, uh, six videos, which I wanted you folks to look at. Re uh, the reason why we do this in uh, these kind of classes is we kind of reverse the classroom, which is more like the Khan Academy style thinking, right? You, you might not understand the concept, then we open it up in discussions in the class. So my format typically is I go more, I try to approach with the kind of the Montessori system uh, in AI. And I think that Lego clubs, which uh, most of you guys have done in, uh, this is in Panaji, Goa, is it, where is this? Right. Panaji, yes. So yes, some yes, teachers so are from other parts, but I am based in Panaji, yes. Got it, got it, got it. So the stuff the kids are already doing is uh, actually building blocks to what we're talking about, right? No, no pun intended, right? Lego, Lego is a good place to solve problems. And then how do we incorporate some of that into our teaching, right? So uh, I've approached that in that manner. And what I think about is kids are, uh, kids are different. All kids are very unique. So you have to somewhat personalize it for all kids in the different skill levels, skill aptitudes, and you go in with, and that's why uh, you go in with the approach of uh, thinking about different learning pathways uh, uh, in education, right? So we do here, uh, I am from Austin. My name is Anoop. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Uh, I'm Anoop and I uh, do to, sorry, go I mean, ahead. I should have introduced you. Please, please, uh, please introduce Anoop. Yeah, I'm, Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think some of you know, I think uh, Sai, uh, Sai has already given some. Yeah, but please do uh, share a little bit about yourself so that it's formalized. Yeah. For sure, for sure, yeah. So uh, I work in the States and I, I'm a, a senior product manager for, I'm a VP for a company. We, we create survey software, so online survey software. So we collect a lot of data. And when I looked at how people are dealing with data, I saw there were fundamental gaps in the understanding, right? It's like, if you ask kids to do double integration in, um, in university, single integration university, if you don't understand basic math, there's no point in talking about advanced stuff, right? So, so I figured out that all these complex topics, they're very, very uh, even for adults or kids, they're easy ways to teach them, right? Some of the good uh, ed tech platforms in India are doing a very good job right now, right? Uh, Saish, you know that they're, some of them are valued at a billion dollars and all that because they're solving a fundamental uh, problem with uh, knowledge and education. Examples are, QMath is a good example um, uh, on the math side. They've done a very good job. And uh, the founder is a good friend of, my, of mine, uh, Manan Kurana. I also consult with these kind of startups on how you teach AI and education in the industry, right? So um, there's uh, other companies like Baiju's, which is also very popular in India. And they've also reached out to see how do we teach AI to kids? Now, uh, fundamentally, the, the, uh, the three ladders to, uh, for kids, uh, I think your son is also here. Sai, Sai Pranav, yeah, yeah, he's also here. The he's three ladders are fundamentally being curious and playing around. That's kind of the ladder, being curious. And when you say curiosity, curiosity with dealing with data, right? Uh, and there are some five big ideas, like I said, uh, the kid, teachers have to cover when to know that the curriculum is successful, right? And these five big ideas are not coming from me. These are coming from research uh, from uh, Massachusetts Technology, Carnegie Mellon and such, right? The, these are the guys who put the, put the overarching uh, fundamental outcomes needed in any kind of education and specifically in AI, right? So highly recommended teachers, if you have not seen it, take a look at it. I've suggested what should be there in each grade based on what uh, I'm reading, right? And most recently I've worked with uh, a policy institute, uh, a policy, a large policy organization who works with the US government uh, for, for AI education and they're called Urban Institute. So if you look at Urban Institute, they help with education policy. So where the US will start changing curriculum as we speak in the next uh, three to four years, you'll see big curriculum changes uh, for education. So it'll be as like math, you'll have some stuff around AI. You will have computer science, you'll have AI coming in, right? Why? Again, if you look at it from the three large countries, right? You have the United States, you have India, you have China, um, and the Chinese are really making a huge progress in kids' education around how they teach AI and everything. Some of them is using tools like, uh, I think you, you mentioned Scratch Sketch, I forget, uh, the MIT tool. Some of them actually using fundamental 
math type thinking uh, uh, around how do we slowly, slowly feed in these AI type uh, curriculum, right? So, so keeping that aside, just a context. Uh, so I said, I do that for a living, right? I'm VP at a company called Question Pro. And I do this for love, just like Sai, uh, Saish does it for love too. And his, the kids he has, uh, I think they're teachers all across, right? Yes. Uh, who yes. are curious, curious in how to do this, right? So um, uh, I'm assuming, can I assume, assume that the big ideas for AI has been watched? Yes, I have insisted yeah. that. Uh, uh, Arnav, you have watched the videos? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Okay, who wants to go ahead and talk to me about, Arnav, you want to give me what is number one big idea for AI and how you understand it? Arnav is quiet now. Sir, I really don't know which Arnav because there are two. There are five big ideas, right, Arnav? So let's uh, switch it from kids to uh, teachers. Teachers, uh, have I you watched say? that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoever wants to say, go ahead. Um, big idea number one is that machines can take an input and we can use the input via the sensors to do many things. Yes, perfect. Yes. So all these machines, whether we talk about uh, robots or, uh, you know, laptops, or any, everything is a machine. Anything with such a chip in it, is going to be a machine. Humans are eventually going, going to get chips. Don't worry about that, right? <laughs> but uh, any any machine which has to interact with the real world has to use sensors. That's big idea number one, right? And all without getting data from the, those sensors, there's not nothing you can do uh, with the machines. Okay, so you all of you have done some Lego uh, tooling and you've seen those uh, robotic uh, experiments you've done on Legos. I'm not going to that, but some of you have experimented, but for those Lego machines to work, you have some sensors, correct? Uh, was it uh, Sai Prana who talked right now? Yes. Yes, yes. So that's that's good. Arnav, does that make sense? And the rest of the teachers, obviously, it's a very basic concept, but there's a lot of things around this uh, which goes into different parts of AI. There's uh, vision AI, there's voice AI, there is um, anything you can do, even touch AI, you know? So all these things are coming into... Uh, why this is important. You start with the sensors and then you say, okay, what can, what sensors, what human sensors can we replicate in machines, right? And how do you catch that data? Okay, and what does the data look like? So those are big topics. That's AI idea number one. Who wants to talk to me about AI idea number two? Uh, let's switch to teachers now. I see Ane. Ane, are, are you a teacher or your parent just listening no, Anay, in. Uh, Anay may not be in the meeting. He's, he's just the admin. Uh, okay, got it. Pallavi, my, uh, colleagues, yeah. Pallavi, Maya, oh, yes, Maya, Krupa, Sanya. Did you get a chance to look at those videos? Teachers are also quiet. I think Saturday evening is probably dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just evening now. It's not just six o'clock. So. Uh, you can still watch them. Uh, it's there in the first a, heading, just two, two minutes. To just, you can just click those links. Yeah, each there. each video is each video is a very small video, is very bit bite sized. Some of the things I look at, like I said, when I reverse the classroom, I keep these bite sized for you to take a look at. It's on the chat thing. I think Saish has put it out there. Um, it's important the teachers un themselves understand those big concepts and there's some guidelines around what needs to be taught underneath that. I, I, I expect the teachers, good teachers to be creative around those uh, anchors, right? So does anybody knows big idea number two? I guess the students, we switch back. Teachers um, are all quiet. I, big idea number two is that we, uh, we have uh, robot agents which uh, can handle data. Right, right. So what does that mean? What does that mean to you? Um, that means we can have computers which take the data, process them into the type of data we want, and then mm -hmm. return it to us in, in whatever way we want. Nice, nice, very good. Very good again. Um, so this also comes from the same white paper, right? This is uh, data or the brains in AI is called models, Sorry. okay? So this concept of models, I think some of you have already put uh, ML papers together. Understanding 
what what is model explaining that to a kid is very important there is a whole video around kids don't understand what a model is right so explaining what models are right so um, let's say my model of i have a teacher right now right uh, pallavi naik is a teacher hi pallavi are you still there hopefully you're not falling asleep yeah <laughs> you're there okay uh, and my is still there my model of pallavi right now i have no idea what my pallavi looks like right but i have a good idea of what uh, maya uh, kamath looks like because she's put a profile picture of her right you can understand that right so the so my model is based on uh, some kind of mental model is based on either pictures voice or you know the behavior of these people right and similarly machines do modeling too right how do they look at something and say that's a model right that is modeling at a very high level that's what model means okay so i want to make sure that you understand that concept of the big idea number 2 is agents or computers or machines maintain these models of the real world they have to have a model representation right and that is kind of fundamental for ai this concept the second concept is fundamental for ai because without these models you cannot operate with either things or data or then environment makes sense okay so let's go to big idea number 3 who wants to go through big idea number 3 um, sir i have one question of big idea number 2 okay go ahead so does it mean that um, these agents are the robots that need uh, models to make a duplicates of themselves or something oh like these mo- yeah, yeah these models are not to, to duplicate yourself uh model is almost think like this are now it is something to deal with something right so uh is let's call it for now simplistic terms for you is a program to deal with the world right so in when you write programming how many of you have done programming right now all of them here uh, have done scratch yeah have done scratch so in scratch you know you have see this blocks right if you yes. do this do the, if we have this condition satisfied do this if you have this condition satisfied do this that is logic right in ai this logic is generated by the machines themselves this concept this model is generated by the machines themselves that's why it's artificially intelligent right it creates its own logic so Does it makes sense one and zeros and ones sorry anna so it's gone in zeros and ones it goes in zeros what, and the ones yeah finally it goes in zeros and ones everything goes into zeros and ones finally right that's, that's the atomic that is the atom atomic building block of any code including ai fundamentally goes into zeros and ones so you're right arna go ahead pallavi you saying something yeah is the decision making involved uh decision making involved yeah of course decision making is involved that is why it's intelligent okay okay so i'm giving a very high level concepts now and obviously we'll go into these ideas each of the ideas have lots to study about right it's like saying it's like saying uh the sun is here as the center of the universe or center of uh, our solar system right and there's a lot you can study about that right about the sun itself right similarly i'm giving a very high level topics for this introduction so that we can go deep in and cover it later or if needed by either through videos or Sai will figure out how to how to disperse that knowledge okay what is a what is the big idea number 3 big idea number 3 is that a computer can learn sai pranav you're yeah. going to sai pranav you're going to you're going to uh, wait now okay you can let others have a chance so i think big idea number 3 is computers learn from data computers learn from data is there right this is very simple video so like we said right uh, and this learning from data uh especially the type uh, we've seen so far right there is many types of ai and we'll go into those details later right a, there's a piece called learning and it's called machine learning okay when machines learn it's called machine learning simple as that right when machines learn what do you need to learn from i'm going to ask uh, uh, krupa are you there we need to train the data sir train the yeah. machine uh, yes yes and uh, I, i know uh, you're there i want to hear from tripa and Sa- sanya i want this to be engaging that's a minimum requirement here 
Mercy, Kripa, uh, Vinod, are you on the teaching side? Rajesh? Uh, sir, uh, the computer's loss from data means that uh, like all data uh, from play, from different types of sensors and uh, these uh, things um, come the AI. Yeah, the inputs are in some machines. Most of the inputs come from sensors, like you said. It can also come from you know data files, like data. Right? There are spreadsheets. Have you dealt with spreadsheets? And have you dealt with uh, files? You know what files are? Um, I know spreadsheets is just like Excel. Yes, very good. You can just give it Excel and it'll do some magic too. Okay. But when you have to train, so when, uh, Arna, when you learn something, what do you learn from? Um, Who, what do you learn from, Arna? Anybody wants to? It's open. There's a question for even the teachers. What do we learn from? We learn from our uh, uh, teachers. We learn from the teachers. Right? Okay, yeah. What do they learn from? Any material like textbooks or yes. we read something. Very, very good. Very, very good. Some of these answers are very simple, but very not obvious, right? We learn from textbooks, we learn from videos, we learn from these sessions, these Zoom sessions too, you learn stuff, right? Right? And most of the time, it is a representation of what? Of um, data. Can I say something? Yes, yes, go ahead, Sai Pranav. Uh, we take data from one of our five senses, and then from mm -hmm. one of those five senses, we store the data in our mind, and we store the mm -hmm. key components of it. For example, if I... Uh, Taste something sweet, remember the sweetness of it as its key component. But if I look mm -hmm. at uh, something like a monitor, I'll look at the key components like it's square, it's usually big other than a laptop, and it doesn't have a keyboard or a mouse. And mm -hmm. then the next time when we come across something with similar key components, we can mm -hmm. identify that as a, a similar object. Right, right. Yeah, so these are, these are, what we call, what you just called, uh, Sai, uh, what we call features in AI, okay? Or in machine learning, the features. So my feature is I don't have a hair, I don't have hair, that's a feature, right? Uh, I'm looking at, I'm straight, I'm wearing something blue today. So that's a feature, right? So these are things which are used to train or learn from, right? It could be as simple as learning from an object. And like uh, one of the teachers said, you can learn from books too. You can learn from uh, videos and all that. So you have to train some Computer. most of the thing, most of most of the things here. Sorry, Arna, just let me finish. Most of the things you're going to do, uh, especially in machine learning. So most of the uh, most of the uh, machine learning or AI stuff which is happening right now is around training and learning. You train these machines, and they learn from many things. So, for example, uh, Arna, you want to say something before I go? Yes, sir. Um, sir, um, so the computer learns uh, all this data of uh, one and zeros uh, from a feature. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. A feature is represented as data, right? So if I say blue, blue is a color for, let's say, my T-shirt. Right. So what is the color of the It's blue. So there's something the computers can learn from. So going back, if I said, I don't know, how do you know that, um, you know, that uh, a horse is a horse? How do you know a horse is a horse? How do you know that? How, how would you know that, Arna? Because everybody just calls it a horse. Yes, everybody else calls it a horse, right? And then and they say- The computer doesn't know it's a horse because it has never learned Correct. that it's a horse. Correct. So somebody, as soon as you were born, somebody, uh, as soon as you started talking, as, start, as soon as you started recognizing objects are now, your parents or your brother or your sister or your teacher said, that's a horse. And you'll say, you look at it and say, why is that a horse? That's four legs. Hmm, okay. Everything else has four legs. What is unique about this? It's kind of big animal. It's probably uh, a unique animal I don't even have seen in my backyard. Do you have horses around lying around in your backyard? No. So somebody's taught to you that from textbooks, right? So there's learning happening, see? Just like that, just like that, you have to teach 
machines to learn about objects. And that's the basic idea about big ID number three. Let's move on to big ID number four. What is big ID number four? You can look at the video, take some time, it's okay. Take it, take, and look through the video. I'll give you some time to look at the video. These last two ones are a little more complicated, but it's good to understand. Big ID age. <laughs> Smell of its excretion, uh, See, that's funny. Uh, come to, um, uh, can I say the fourth idea? No, no, Sai, Sai uh, give everybody else a chance. Okay. Sai Pranav, let's see if anybody else, let's, let's say I, I would love to hear some teachers talking. Let's see how much excitement we have in India in teaching here. <laughs> oh, everybody, uh, all these teachers are quiet. Maybe something's going on at home. <laughs> I know Rajesh has been typing here. Sir, big idea number name is um, AI agents are clumsy. Oh, what do you mean by clumsy? A lazy, lazy. Clumsy is not like, you know, they're clumsy. What's a good explanation of clumsy? Anybody wants to explain, teacher? I'm, I might not explain this as well as you folks. Uh, can I say? Yes, uh, Sai can wait. Teachers, I want to give teachers a chance. Mercy de Costa. We know, I don't know, we know this there, Rajesh. Pallavi, everybody's quiet. Pallavi, you wanna go? So uh, we want them to behave like humans. We expect them to be like humans only. Yes, yes, we expect them to be like humans. And if the, there's no human-like behavior, then it looks very robotic. It looks very clumsy, right? It looks very artificial. It, they, if you, for example, if you write a program and it says, uh, you know, the program is supposed to respond back to you, say, hi, uh, hi, uh, Arnav, for example, right? And it's supposed to have a conversation with you. And you say, hey, hey, did you watch that game last night? Did you watch the cricket game last night? Or did you, did you uh, celebrate this festival last night? They have no idea. But they'll say, what do you mean by festival? Are you referring to the Independence Day? No, no, no. We're referring to the festival which happened last night. So what happens is most of the places where AI fails is they don't understand context. This context thing is context meaning. Right now I can say, Arnav, go to go to the bathroom. You'll say, yeah, I know where the bathroom is. In your house, you know where it is, right? Machines, like I said in the previous thing, it has to be learned. And when you, when you say bathroom, which bathroom? They have no idea. The bathroom in the office, or bathroom in the school, bathroom in the house. When I say bathroom for you, it's immediate, that bathroom. So this they're very clumsy. They'll say, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about, right? So that's the concept, right? And that means these things require a lot more training within and, uh, and typically the specialized AI, right? They only solve one problem, just like a robot. I think I saw one of the videos where you guys did, uh, who was it? was it the uh, videos where you know, you're pumping in air into a balloon, a Lego, Lego robot, right? Was pumping air into a balloon. Now, if you ask that same Lego robot to go and pump air into the tire of a, a, a truck, it's not going to work, correct? It's yes a no? balloon pumping robot. It's not a tire pumping robot. It doesn't correct. know how it's to pump a tire. Correct. It doesn't know how to pump a tire, right? But if you ask a human, he'll say, hmm, this pump might not work for that. Let me find some other big pump and let me pump it with that big pump, right? Sim that's, why it's, that's why these machines are very specific. It solves a very specific thing, right? And that's why, because it's solving very, very narrow things, and it's called narrow AI, that you cannot use that same AI to solve other problems. Eventually, you'll get what we call generalized AI. It will be smarter. One robot for everything. Question. Yes, go ahead. So when we type something like uh, uh, car, then it shows like uh, many uh, many cars because it doesn't know what, what uh, which car is specific we are talking about. Right, right. That is very smart. That is a very interesting observation, Arna. So that is what we call that is being a general search. It's called search. And behind the search, by the way, whether it's Google or not or Facebook, these searches are actually using AI, right? If you, for example, your search are now might come back with a red car, uh, maybe uh, a car based in India, uh, let's say 
what are big brands in India are now, car brands in India. Uh, Hyundai is a big car, right? They'd come back with the Hyundai car. And when I search for a car, it might come back with uh, uh, a Lexus, which is a, a popular luxury car because that's what I look at, right? So this is this is what, the, and that's smartness. They know who I am and they'll give me that result, okay? Let's go to the last one. It's an important last one, right? Uh, this time around, it, it's open for anybody. Anybody can, Vedant, Vedant is quiet. Arnav is engaged. Arnav Gupta, Maurya, two Arnavs. Vedant? Sir, it is, um, sometimes the AI can be bad for yourself, for humans. It can be good for humans or it can be ugly for humans. Yeah, it is, that is what I write. Give, give me an example of how AI can be very harmful, harmful to humans. Sir, I heard some new Go. news. So I think Microsoft uh -huh. had launched like this AI bot on Twitter that would tweet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, it would learn. The, uh, people would DM the robot and the, mm -hmm. uh, and the robot would learn what the people mm -hmm. DM. And it would put that into context. So it's like... Yeah. Repeat that again. I didn't get that. Uh, um, so uh, I, know. I think Microsoft, uh, Microsoft launched mm. this, um, this AI bot. Oh, wait on. Uh huh. Uh, AI mm. bot some time ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Some time ago, it's now mm -hmm. shut down. I come mm -hmm. to the region a bit later. So this AI robot um, could learn uh, using the DMs that people sent to it. Mm. So, okay, and, and they shut it down. Um, they shut it down because in the span hmm. of 12 or 15 hours, it started seeing extremely bad things, extremely hurt. Ah, things. very yeah. good. Very good. Very good example, Vedant. So, so when we try to... And they shut it down in 24 hours. Wow, nice. Very interesting. Very nice. Very interesting. Well, example, I have right? so... one thing to say about a bad AI and good AI. Hmm. So suppose we... Um, there are two people and one puts good uh, the positive AI and one puts the negative. Mm. So the other uh, robot will uh, not uh, know what is the uh, the good thing for a human and it will do the bad thing. Okay. But the other uh, part will know the uh, the other uh, thing. What right, right. What, what is good, what is bad, it's all relative, right? Good, bad, for example. For, for example, for example, let's take cars because you kids like cars, right? Um, when you say, is it good to drive over 60 kilometers an hour on this road? Question is, which road? Are you driving in the US or driving in Goa, Panaji, or driving in some place in India, right? It depends. So rules are different. So when you break a rule, it's, it's good or bad depending on that location. And that place. So that's again like talk about those are rules based good or bad, right? And good or bad, who define good or bad? Guess what? It's humans who are defining good or bad, right? So um, you know, uh, they have no context, machines have no context for good or bad. So what is ethical has to be also thought about in terms of when we do what is ethics? You know what ethics are? Ethic meaning again, thinking about good or bad, doing the right thing, right? And what is right or wrong is again defined by us. Right, so, so AI can do anything you ask them to do. Just have to be very aware that some of these things can have a lot of problems. For example, if I say, AI, go and figure out the best kids in this, uh, best kids in the school. AI will ask me, what is, it, what do you mean by best? People who talk more, who solves problem more. So there are a lot of variables you can put into the AI to define, uh, define uh, what is best or not so best, right? And these variables are configured by us humans. So we have to be very careful that AI can be what we call biased. You know what bias is, right? Bias means it has a- I'm Favoring one side. Correct, very well explained, better than me. Who was that? Was it Vedant? Yes. Good job, Vedant, very good explanation. I'm happy that you can explain it better than I can, okay? And the, 
So you can, so reducing bias is very important. May I? Okay. So we talked about five big things. Good. Okay. A little bit of background sound here. Can we go and mute? Uh, who that is? Perfect. Thank you. So we talked about five big things and all of you engaged in those five things. I'm very happy that you understand those concepts. So what I'll do now is again, go into a little more high level things before we go into, um, go into further uh, details, okay? So let me share my screen now. So hopefully again, uh, uh, Saish has put those videos out there. Highly recommend all of you watch it from start to end, especially the teachers at the end because I'm suggesting some curriculum I have put some curriculum here for some uh, local clubs and everything, and we go through some of this. But look at the curriculum if you need any support or any suggestions, I can always help you guys with. Uh, we hear most of the teaching here, we go through project-based teaching. So we take a very complicated project and then we create a pathway to reach that project. So just like you do Lego projects out there, we take you know this thing, I want to do vision AI and there's a project we do. And we reverse engineer that and go from basics all the way to the project, right? To get the end, end result is a project for kids, especially when kids want to get excited. If you think about why kids are excited about Lego, because they can build on something. They can build on top. Similarly, the same approach we use on this, this side. Let's talk, go through, uh, go through some Excuse slides me. here for now. Excuse me. Was there a question? Yes, go ahead. Sir, for the big, the big, hello? Yes, yes, go ahead. Sir, for the big idea of five, I had one example that if we, like, AI is, like, taking lots of progress, so it even makes humans dependent. One bad point about AI is that. I didn't hear that. Sorry, what were you saying? Uh, AI can. Can I also say something? No, no. So for, let's. Uh, who was it? Who was talking last? Last Sir, time. Uh, no. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Sir, I was saying that for the big idea of five, I had one more disadvantage of AI. That mm -hmm. was like if we have too much addiction to AI, like really big progress so we can even be dependent on them like life would be yeah wow amazing very good very good point right it's like yes if your mom does everything for you you'll be dependent on your mom you won't learn anything right yes, correct right yes, if your parents does everything for you your parents finish off your homework then you don't know how to finish off your homework correct so you're going to get you will be very dependent Right, you'll be dependent and you have to be very aware of the dependency, right? Or do you want to give that dependency? Do you want to continue depending on AI for very important things in your life? Very good thing. Who was that again? Good job. Sir Arno. Arno, very good, very good thinking. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, why, right? So you see all these things, I think all of this, you know, probably, right? These brands in front of you, right? This is, you know, this is probably, this is probably, uh, this is WhatsApp probably like, you know, three years ago, right? It's probably around, I would say around anywhere close to hundred million text messages with sent in 60 seconds. That's how much data they collect. Hundred million text messages. That's a lot of, lot of text. This is how many hours of people watching in one minute. It's probably at the 500,000 hours being watched, right? So all this, what is, what is the number one thing you're seeing here? There's a lot of growth in terms of usage of these social type apps, right? Consumer type apps. And because you're using it, there's a lot of data. That's, so I think I you understand that. Ghost one, I've not seen this one ever. Sorry, you're not seeing the screen? Uh, uh, sir, I have not, not seen this um, ghost. Uh, app before this oh the ghost app, app. okay that's, you that's, mean snapchat. yes yes that's snapchat it's popular here might not be popular in india okay good good this one is also these are pictures you take snaps of pictures and you share right and that's how many you create in one yeah. minute so there's a lot of a lot of data of which like is a dm app like a dming app which one is that yeah like snapchat yeah it's a dming app for pictures yeah you're right i haven't used it myself 
I know a lot of kids use it here too. So, uh, you know, all this data is being collected, right? That's number one. You know what this is, right? You know what this is? What's happening uh, here? The automatic I, th I think, I think, I think this is a Tesla car. Because I thought that Tesla is going to Right. Uh, computer vision uh, for cars. Correct. Computer vision for cars. Correct. So when you do computer vision for cars, what is happening is Tesla is running some software inside its car. And this is AI software running its thing. And they're sending data. They have data being sent back and forth through the internet. Okay. So, so, sir, this car is showing that um, uh, on the screen that there's a sports car, a police car, a passenger car, an SUV in front of you. Right, right. They know there's a police car. They know it's a sports car. Anytime a new car is introduced, they'll uh, start learning that this is a car. They know what a bicycle is. They know what a pedestrian is, right? All this is happening. And all this back, there's some... Um, a, a cloud services called Tesla's cloud services, which will go send back and forth this data, right? Some AI, which is called edge AI, which is at the edge of the uh, machine itself. The machine itself has some smarts here. It'll do something here. Anything which it needs to send back, they'll send back saying, I'm learning something new. What should I do with it? And because there are millions of these cars out there, each of them are sending this data back. They're learning faster, right? They're learning faster in the cloud. And when they finish learning, they can send that data back saying, hey, Tesla, this is a, that's a garbage truck on the left side. There's a, that's, that truck, you should be careful. That driver, you should be careful. And on this road, you should be careful because this truck, is, the, the, these, this truck is seeming to stop every five minutes. That's how smart these cars can get, right? So they can go to a road, specifically to a road, and say, be careful on this road. They can warn other Tesla drivers to be careful on this road. And all that thing can happen, okay? So we have around 15 minutes. I'm gonna go through a little fast on this and then it's like, I'm gonna skip through this. Most important thing is uh, data is growing before it is called uh, on your phone, you have gigabytes, right? I think iPhone 13, which just, just got released is the first, first uh, phone to have terabytes of data, correct? Are you aware? Sa Saish Sai, uh, uh, and Sai Pranav and all that. You heard of the latest? Yeah, uh, the big thing is one TV. <laughs> One TV of data, right? There's a lot of data you can collect, right? So these guys, we, before we talk about terabytes, we talk about exabytes. Exabytes is a billion gigabytes, okay? So when the kids are growing up within a span of next year, nobody's going to talk. When you talk about data, when you come into the professional side of college, you talk start not going to talk about gigabytes anymore. You're going to talk about exabytes, okay? That's a lot of data, okay? And this is... Uh, somewhat close to what you kids already do, right? Everywhere, every place, they're trying to replace humans with robots, right? This is on the uh, International Space Center. It's, I forget the name, uh, CME, I think the robot's name is. You don't, you don't need to send 20 people into space unless humans themselves want to have that experience, right? The space, everything there can be done by robots. This is an interesting thing where now you can go and ask this robot, well, how's the uh, how's the space flight? You can this thing does the communication back to the base station. All that is happening as we speak, right? So this is in the International Space Center. I forget the name. You can you kids can Google it up and find out what the name is. Okay. This is important for people who are teachers specifically on this thing. I think I'm paying some. This is a little detailed, but uh, what you want to see is the size of these bubbles, right? Size of the bubble. The bigger the size, the more these industries are going to get affected. Okay, so let's take a big big bubble here. High tech, obviously machine learning is important. If you're in high tech, you will eventually need to learn, just like you need to learn programming in the past, you need to start learning machine learning, right? Uh, uh, automotive, we talked about it. There's a lot of RPA called robotic process automation. And there is stuff, if you take this one, there is physical robots coming into play. There's uh, autonomous vehicles coming into play. This is as of 2018, so it's kind of old already, 2018. since. 2018, these are changes which are happening. Let's take another big bubble. It's called consumer packaged goods, or called CPGs, are again robots are coming into play. Right? This is another big bubble. Electric power and natural gas, computer vision coming into play. Wow, that's interesting. Power and natural gas, electricity, right? Whether it's in Goa and this, why do you need computer vision? 
Why do you think we need computer vision, kids, for uh, natural gas and power? Kids? You know power, right? Electricity in your house? For electricity yes. to come to your house? Why do you need, why do you think computer vision is important? Vision for from the robot's vision. So like if any wire is messed up or something? Nice, good job. If there is a line which is messed up, there is sparks coming. Uh, there are, uh, you know, in these utility companies, there's a lot of risk factors. The wire is burned or there's a like, yeah, wire is burned. You'll get something else. You'll get something else. But because even before the wire burns, the computer the, there is like become a virus, so that's why like right. yeah, um, right. These utilities have a lot of meters and all that, right? And a lot of electricity is going back and forth between these utility companies and consumers like us. So there are machineries which <clears throat> cover different aspects of electricity transmission, right? And some of some of these times, like you know, you could have a flying object like a bird coming in doing something wrong or um, or uh, you know or transmission itself being faulty and a lot of these places they're using um, using AI for example here in where I am in a, a state called Texas they use AI to measure the quality of oil wells you know oil wells where they dig and get oil they have to they look at the quality of the oil well using AI Right, so they use all this for understanding how you know most of them are vision-based AI, okay, or if equivalent for us is AI for eyes, right? Uh, vision-based AI. Number three, schools. You know, right now, a lot of your teachers are there, right? You see math being taught separately, conversations being taught separately, and the social aspects being taught separately, right? The so uh, these two things will start merging together. You need math. You need also math for um, AI uh, and not every math is needed, but there's some fundamental math in terms of what we call uh, correlation, regression, all this stuff are uh, things which will come blended in into AI. So it'll start not being separated out, it'll be together very soon, okay? So schools need it. Okay, this is a guess for you. You know what Pop-Tarts are? Have you seen this? Do you have this in India yet? I know Nutella is in India. Do you have Pop-Tarts in India? No, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Okay, these are like, I think it's equivalent to that, uh, 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 Saish, is that equal to this in India? Like this uh, is basically- You say uh, some something like, uh, uh, no, uh, something like cookies with jam in it, something like that. Yeah, uh, cookies, yeah, nothing cookies with jam. Yeah. yeah, cookies with jam. This is just the fact that the cookies, you can see the opening, this you cannot see the opening unless you bite into it, okay? Very, very similar thing, what uh, uh, Sai said, right? So you know what, so these are very popular snacks in the US, okay? Kids love them. And this is a hurricane, right? Right, Vedant? Have you seen hurricanes? Do we have hurricanes in uh, Goa? Vedant is quiet. Lord, uh, sir, yeah. we had just, uh... Uh, just some days passed because there was a like cyclones coming. Oh my God! There's a cyclone coming. Okay, got it, got it. So these things. What is common between these two things? What do you think? A pop tart, which is a snack like a cookie with a jam. Uh, this this is actually uh, some type of food. This uh, this is what happens in monsoon, and this okay. happens. So, well, what, 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 what what is what is related? Why are the two pictures related? Do you know there's, there's some relation to these two things? They yeah. both are images. Or, 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 they both are images okay. of a good, cyclone. Good catch. Good thing. Is there any common thing you can think about? Anything you can think about other than images? Other than yeah. there is blue and yellow. Yeah, and yellow, uh, yeah. yellow. yeah spinning like a uh, cyclone. They're spinning like one. Okay, spinning like a cyclone. I don't think the pop has spin like a cyclone, but okay, good, good try. It has been good spinning attempt. over here. It's, huh? You see, it's in the shape of a cone and it has already been spinned. Okay, spinned. Okay, spinned is not a word, it's spun, but uh, I'll take that, but not not good enough, not good enough. Mm -hmm. Keep on keep on trying. It's very hard to find the relationship, uh, right? Can I say one? It's, uh, yes. They both uh, use a uh, color uh, blue, red, and uh, a slight shade of yellow. 
yeah somebody else is saying them saying yeah you got colors too yeah go ahead so, so temp, uh, the color shows the temperature okay so who 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 is saying this sorry <laughs> i like the name so what are the uh vedan sorry i don't see you here he said varun Okay. <clears throat> anyways, anyways, all good. Okay. It's his name uh, is Varad. He's there uh, on top. Varad, B A R A D. Varad. Okay, Varad. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, temperature. That's a good one. The colors and temperature, but that's not the thing. So obviously, for us humans, we can find this, right? What is this? What is happening here? What is happening is, if I go to the, my next screen, what is happening is, Walmart figured out that during cyclones, a lot of people want to buy up. pop tarts they stock up on this thing they buy this and why do they buy it they figure out that you know when a cyclone happens they have to be in, at home for a long time and kids want snacks and the number one snack they eat at home when a cyclone comes apparently is pop tart now very unrelated we would not find it ourselves obviously somebody did some analysis somebody did some data science type analysis and figure out oh, a lot of people are actually buying a pop tart so when a cyclone comes in uh, the us what what does walmart do first thing they go and stock up on pop tarts they go and fill up the inventory around pop tarts okay so very interesting right how why would do this if you go and ask in india what do you need to uh, if a flood comes what do people eat nobody knows that answer what do people eat what do kids But, eat at um, home sir this is kind of a strange question So yeah, we, it's a strange question because so you get a strange answer like coming back. We would, so we we would like never. Dairy milk and biscuits like Oreo. Yeah, so someone see, has so done that, the survey. Right, somebody has done some analysis. Right, so this is very interesting. So Walmart goes and stocks. So I think product. when a flood comes, they drink chocolate milk. <laughs> Could be, yeah. We have to find out. You, you kids, I, I don't know how you kids think. So the machines know what But you guys are going to buy. I don't. Know. Okay. Good, good, good. So it's a completely random thing, right? As random as you can get, but we would never figure it out. I would not figure it out. Neither would you figure it out, right? Unless you run, unless you run some analysis, or unless a machine tells you this, right? So there are three things which I look at, and I'll wrap it up here. So uh, when we go through our courses here, this is meant for the teachers. We go through number one, we go to da data visualization. It's a little more uh, these things a little more uh, fun type, right? When I do data visualization, I also bring in uh pattern recognition and um problems to solve which are visual type pattern recognition problems right so the kids move from pattern recognition to this you can check some of the videos out and uh, you'll see some of the examples i put out excuse me um and then we go to data analysis this is more for a little more middle school kids uh but i've seen smaller kids like uh my son he is how old is he he is he's going he's in fourth grade and he does some data analysis so i can give him some data he can do very simple analysis and it actually helps us with his math skills too right so for example when you do algebra you have uh, variables with data analysis also you have this concept of variables right so uh, and it's very easy for him to do eighth or ninth grade math now because he's learning data analysis which is very oh this is how we do it you know this is x equal to x square plus y what is x if you ask him that he'll say oh this is how we do it i would put it together and why is that because it's somewhat related data analysis is dealing with multiple data elements right and what happens to what happens if you change data how do you manipulate data all this comes into this thing last is ai basics right so ai basics most of the time i lead with visual ai vision ai um and this is for the teachers right because that is exciting for kids they understand vision very easily right and then we move into sound ai uh and uh, related uh, related stuff so most of the time i start with vision ai because it's very easy to use uh, not very easy to use very uh, fun to play around with and i also go advanced i do um, things with uh, kids don't have to understand how to tune a model and all that but i start introducing them to even tensor flow which is very advanced for adults but you don't have to open up the like if you look at robots you don't have to open up the hood you teach them what it can do first and then So if the kids are curious, then you open up the hood of the engine. Does that make sense, uh, Saish and the rest of the teachers? I'm not uh, having an interaction with teachers, so I yeah, thought so, I'll. Uh, 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 so the kids here already know about Google Teachable. Uh, they have used uh, they have used uh, trained models for uh, some of their projects. 
and the okay which uh, which one which one is that uh, google teachable machine D. google teachable machine uh, google uh, with teachable good good very good scratch has very a good. plugin right so uh, scratch has a plugin and all these mm-hmm. teachers uh, who are here already have used google teachable they have used uh, machine learning uk uh, so they they have used uh, somebody can just uh, uh, add in here uh, palavi teacher can you just explain uh, i think you have done pose learning you have done sound uh, can you please explain so in the first phase we train the machine for the data collected data like text then sound color mm-hmm. and then then the model they recognize the what we are trained for and then mm-hmm. the output is generated based on the perfect, trained data perfect no very good very good that's a very good thing um those are with teachable they don't let you open it up uh, primarily right they go straight into uh, the google teachable's ui correct which yeah. is you can drag and drop images and all that no that's a very good introduction all the way that's how we start right that's how, definitely how we start and that, that depends on the grades too right so you start there and then um and then you uh, they want to do something more so some of the stuff is actually what um, i think with uh, google teachable they have motion to gesture do they yes. have gesture now okay yeah so that that's a great start what kids eventually they want to get to is once you have a understanding of the flow uh pal with uh, with teachable or a- mit scratch platform is to see how do i tune the model how do i play around with the model right so that's the next step you want to take them to and for that unfortunately google teachable doesn't give you that much options right there's very little options but that is a stepping stone start with that obviously and then go into this then what you need to do is you say in google teachable this is what we should do here we're going to give you a model let's play around with the model and i'm talking about model training in terms of out- outputs and uh, you know the wa- weightage of models for different features and all that right so then that is when they get also excited because now they can have things like um um uh, they can con- control different elements of the model in, in terms of the outcome itself right so good good that you guys are using that that's a good starting platform uh, there's other uh, scratches as some so, uh, the one uh, and a common uh, example is hello yes yeah for our mobile we do the finger this no sensing we train our mobile to recognize our finger prints and then to unlock the phone we use the same finger good no nice nice so uh, those are uh, i think uh, curriculum wise like i said as long as you think through those five uh, a- areas and you cover all those areas right we should be good. that's a good outcome for a kid all the way to middle school right i don't know about high school up to middle school is my focus anyway so that's that's great that's great you guys you guys are doing that uh we would love to see what the curriculum you guys put together right um i will share it with you so uh, so they have created 30 lesson plans uh, based mm-hmm. on um, based on the scratch only scratch based uh, machine learning uh, uh, ai mm-hmm. basically so it just does pose detection sound detection handwriting detection so they have made like a uh, 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 fan right so a finger so you just raise uh, one finger and the fan is on one speed and two fingers is two speed of a fan so the fan is basically a scratch code again uh, uh, three blades of a fan moving round and round so the speed Perfect. of the fan is based on finger detection so right. as simple as that basically the whole uh, uh, lesson plans are geared towards demystifying ai and ml and making it very relatable to a child's understanding we haven't talked right, right. In, in the whole lesson plan what ai and ml is we just give them hmm. exercises yeah 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 that's no, good. that's what we are teaching yeah no, no that's good size yeah nothing nothing like that yeah right right and i think the like i said we always start from those big ideas and let them figure out within those areas and be a much better approach i've seen uh, yeah. because if you go straight it's like mm-hmm. mathematics if you go and yeah. say 4 plus 4 is equal to 8 saish great how am i going to use this yes <laughs> right so start uh, always um, i think your approach with lego is probably the best closest approach we need to get to they need something tangible coming out with the project right yeah. Yes. If they get something tangible this is something i build and i can fine tune it this is my robot versus the scratch because scratch is a little disconnected scratch is good to learn the concepts but is it actually disconnected from the real life right yeah. uh, lego has done a good job bridging that gap if you think it's as close to robot as you can get right 
before they physically get in touch with a engineering type robot right so uh good no good i'm uh, uh, any thoughts saish on uh, how i can help and the teachers and any questions yeah. i know when high level i made yeah. so, I, made, uh, I made an <laughs> i made an assumption that there was no curriculum when i came in which yeah. is uh, the assumption i made because saish said to just talk about stuff So, no, no, I wanted uh, I uh, uh, not to pose mm-hmm. any uh, uh, ideas because I would love to have a different perspective, right? So we start with one perspective. You have added some other perspectives here about like bias and which we haven't, our teachers haven't thought about. So teachers, do you find anything uh, that you can take up from here and ask uh, Mr. Anup about uh, mm-hmm. what you think, uh, what you have done, and what he's talked to us about today about the five big ideas? Sonal teacher or Mercy teacher, any comments? Yeah, Vinod sir. Uh, hello sir. Yes, yes, hello. Over the course of time, we'll be designing the curriculum of seventh, eighth, and even uh, another standard. So during that time, we can uh, do the advanced thing on what sir has said, sir Anu. No, no. He hasn't said anything about advanced. What he has placed is something like, for example, bias, right? So, uh, yeah. Do you think uh, when you created your lesson plan, did you observe that there are some kind of bias or uh, those big ideas that you find you could have talked about? No, we haven't till yet not observed that bias thing. Okay. Yeah. So, Pallavi and Sai is one of the ways uh, we are suggesting here to the. Uh, southwest us education system which includes texas louisiana and all that right so we are i'm influencing some of the curriculum there is what we call thematic ai for kids right thematic ai is how does ai for example essential question we are asking again see everything here is based on questions right how can ai enhance a creative process ask a question right because now when you start with that question uh, it's almost like your ted talk right uh, it, you start with a very fundamental very big question and then then leave it to the kids to figure it out right so when you ask this you see uh, we got some amazing feedback from from kids around you know how ai can be bad microsoft example came through then i heard something around oh. that is a, a couple of very good examples right because they're very observant you don't have to teach them <laughs> they can teach you a lot right so when you talk about that when you ask an essential question how can ai en- enhance a creative process uh, then you will say okay what creative process is it drawing is it dancing is it coming up with ideas and then kids will come back well, what if this happens and suddenly you the kids have given you feedback on your curriculum that's the essential guidance i can give teachers right don't just follow the machine learning you know the uk thing it's a great idea it's good they have given you the tools but the curriculum should be designed with the context of india in place with the context of goa in place with the context of kids in place number one right So example is like uh, the one we talked about this uh, one of the teachers from MIT uh, she came back and said she came back and said we want to do this thing called uh, I want to create a dance the kids want to think we can create dance in collaboration with an AI system right now big big ask how do, how are kids even going to do that but point is now dance with collaboration AI system you already have technology to look at the google uh, teach with google or the google system posenet is already there out there right posenet on the uh, google, if you go and do google creative lab posenet you'll see it right so so people uh, and 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 some apps which are in china are actually based on the posenet app right the posenet is the the posing uh, the human pose dynamics right how do you evaluate that so now uh, take a i don't know a bollywood theme song and uh, you tell the ai system you the teachers obviously have to do a lot of work here but the impact is you take you know you take an input like a bollywood music you have a posenet configured system which requires an ai engineer by the way to help and then they get the kids to fine tune it don't let the kids build the everything but let them fine tune the posenet app right so so how do you transcribe the body the body to Uh, bodies uh, postures to uh, conduce or be conducive with uh, bollywood music suddenly that is these are things which are newsworthy for if you took a look at it from a marketing standpoint these are things which you guys can lead and change the world in terms of um, 
how kids are improve, improving AI, right? I'm using that as an example, but start with that big question. Can you share this example if you have the video of this dance thing? Because we're curious to see how, how what you're mentioning because to visualize po pose it. If you no, no, I mean to say it. how it was used for this dance thing, uh, Bollywood dance. No, they don't. They have no. They, this is brainstorming happening. Oh, yes. That's what I'm referring oh, okay. to. Okay. Right? So, so this is thematic type of AI, mm -hmm. right? Thematic AI. It's like you're building the tool set, just like you know somebody else built the machine learning tool set, and Google's coming up with this. Google is making just so that there's a Google is all making right now from ed, the education sector. They're making two hundred million dollars a year minimum. So it's all for them. It's a competitive. Thing. They, they're looking from a. They're looking purely from a revenue game, because these kids, when they come out, they're going to use Google uh, Google's tools anyways, right? Massive audience, right? So they have a they have a corporate need to make this happen, right? Ours should be the other way around. We should look at it and say, how do we make our kids smart enough, independent of companies like Google, right? Whether they get hired by Google, good for them, but. Uh, or uh, Amazon or any of those companies, right? Who are complete into machine learning and they'll continue to grow. So there's this thing called the, um, uh, these companies actually not getting older, they're getting younger, right? These companies, why are they getting younger? Because they're learning from data, and they're getting smarter, right? So there's a reverse aging effect for these large companies. And, but the unfortunate thing is they're tapping into, tapping into the kids, kids' brains to, um, to uh, reverse the age, right? The kids are using their tools and they're making those companies smarter, right? Now, I'm not saying do not use this, do not use any other thing. I actually use Google's Collab for teaching, right? Google's Collab for teaching data science. Uh, but these are things which you can think of, which are thematic, right? Because once you do that, the point is you're involving the kid in every sense, right? They're actually moving around, they're dealing with vision AI, and they're uh, you know, playing with Bollywood music and all that, right? So, so uh, these are suggestions which come out from these large teachers, thematic AI, AI and creative process, for example, AI and X, AI healthcare, AI for government and compliance. I mean, Saish, you're, in the, you're liaisoning with the government, I would assume, right? How, how does these things think? And get them into those areas where adults are operating. I'm a big fan of, I believe these kids have the power to do that. <laughs> we should not. Yes, they don't have the, some of the basics are not there, but if you, they don't have the limits too. <laughs> they don't have, they ask, the kind of questions they ask are unbelievable questions, right? Uh, first question I think Arna was just, are, do you mean a model is something to duplicate robot? I can go into that whole discussion. Yeah. These are things which people, even Elon Musk is afraid about, right? Robots cloning themselves, right? But there's a fundamental questions they come up with, which are, you know, big, big guys are actually dealing with, right? So keep, keep that curiosity. I mean, all of your teachers, I know you, I don't have to preach on this. You guys are uh, much, much better at understanding this than we do, but get them excited, get them completely involved by, I mean, Lego is much easier to get them involved because you have physical tools to do this. Here, you need to create those physical tools is my point. Right, yeah. Saish? Does it make sense? Yeah. Yes. So yes, Arnav had a question, I guess. Anagupta? Yes. Yeah, I was asking like from where can I start with AI technology? Like from where can I start the code and launch stuff? I think Saish already answered that, Arna. Yes. So think, has uh, some no, no, Arna, uh, Sai Prana will help you. Uh, okay. Sai, yeah. Yeah, I can help Arna just to teach a little about uh, to start with. Okay. Okay, it's almost time for me to wrap up. Yes. Uh, Saish, yes. you can obviously yeah. go back and forth with me. Um, yes. Email. Yes. yes. Teachers, any other questions? Great. Fantastic. So uh, I will share with you the uh, the curriculum and thanks, uh, Anup, for uh, spending so much valuable time <laughs> with our kids and teachers. Both, no, no problem. Uh, in in no motivating. Problem. Uh, so uh, I, I would I would share you some project ideas and see if we could help these kids. Uh, uh, they have some large ideas. Uh, Saiprana had built a, a yoga uh, uh, Post detection, I guess, with his mobile app using mm, Google Disable nice. Machine. So this kid, some of these kids have already used uh, some kind of uh, uh, machine learning models. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So, Very good. And there's one more idea which Cyber was exploring. I will share that idea with you and let's see if that idea could be taken up as a project, as you said, right? So uh, instead of doing it the formal way of doing a syllabus, you could have a challenge and work backwards to uh, implement the challenge. Yeah, I think that that, that yeah. has been most amount of feedback, Saish, is yeah. like, it has to be project-based. Yes. It's like your Lego, Lego project. Otherwise, the problem is people get distracted very quickly. 
Right. So they, uh, they have a finish line, right? <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I had a very, very interesting problem which uh, Prana also had posed. So there is a big catalog of uh, uh, Lego parts. I think more than ten mm. thousand Lego parts are there, and mm. uh, uh, these uh, these pieces, right? The nomenclature is mm. difficult for everybody to remember what this piece, particular mm. piece, is called. And the huge mm. forums about discussing: uh, Can you somebody share the name of this uh, piece or name of this part, right? So you got to go to Lego database and find out what it is. If you could train a, a mobile app uh, whose camera can straight away detect uh, a particular piece and tell the name, uh, it would be a like a huge thing for kids who love Lego to identify the part. Suppose they want right, to right, this. yeah, right. And so, this uh, this is where this is where uh, AI is not a good fit. Oh, is I it? Want to make sure. Yes, yes, yes. These are very uh, because they're very discrete type of. They're not. They're very logical type of detection. Meaning, if if this has two parts and has a dimension of x, I know what the piece is, right? This is a logical if else thing. Oh, right. Okay. When okay. when the logic side of it is extremely complex, extremely complex, which cannot be done in like literally fifty to sixty lines of code logic if blocks, then that is when AI comes into play. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Okay, okay. So this kid's a, this is a good example of having a discussion with the teacher on do you think AI is a good fit for this? Yes or no? Okay, why? Because I can write the logic literally sitting down with you right now, right, uh, Saish? Right. Okay. On on the right, but recognizing it whether it's uh, uh, you know uh, the initial recognition around complexity or classifying right initial cl- complexity like high, medium, low complexity and mm-hmm. saying this is of type A type A, type B, type C, maybe that's a way to classify it, right, immediately, or is it a type A type of block type? Then it reduces your logic. So it's a mixture of AI classifying initially and then using FL then blocks. Does that make sense? So your complexity of the algorithm Mm -hmm. reduces quite a bit. Okay. Okay. A lot of people do that, by the way. So for example, even in Google, you think it's AI. No, no, they have some shitty code too. (laughs) Part, Part of my language, but you get the idea, right? Okay. Right. They do. If this code, if people are searching from France, go to this cluster to run AI code. Not don't wait for the French language to come in. First of all, if the searches are coming from uh, England, go here because there are Google has this trending algorithm which is separate, right? So they know that. So for example, a good example: if you search for a movie right now, let's say any uh, go and movie, and then you search for the actor in that movie. As soon as you type the first letter, as soon as you type the first letter, it'll show up the actor's name in the drop down right and that is not machine learning that is actually logic actual if logic right okay. because, because the machine you've you've already indicated that i've done a movie search it's flagged now find me the it's called the tree the knowledge graph around that movie and any search should be around the knowledge graph for that movie right start with that before you go into your big algorithm for machine learning so there's a lot of stuff people mix and match algorithms you don't think everything is all ai there's there's our actual stuff where they mix and match. Okay, good. Uh, sorry, so I'm curious. We'll see. I can give you any feedback I do. Uh, uh, but the approaches I, uh, I can say is, this is definitely one approach, right? In terms of project, the other approach, uh, the education ed tech institutes, the Baiju's and the QMATs and the uh, Google Ad is doing is, Google is promoting the tooling, obviously, for a reason. The other guys are doing more visual understanding, very fundamental basics of data first. They start with data, understanding data. So I'll give you an example of QMath, which they haven't released. They'll release next year. Is um, they will? Uh, uh, we're talking the head. You know, I'm working with the head of curriculum there. They are uh, going to talk about uh, mission-based learning. What is mission? Is like let's say Arna wants to go into the theater. What does he observe? Right. And you take a ticket, like a you know a ticket for the cinema theater. What is on the cinema theater ticket? How are you making decisions based on the cinema theater ticket? Why did you choose that? You know this this is understanding or discovery of data itself. First is that that is where they start with, and then they take they obviously say okay now if you want to get uh, how do you know how do you know this uh, cinema theater is going to be full or not right? Then they take the thematically they go and say uh, how do you build a uh, you know, how do you think Netflix is building the movie recommendation system is the last project they have on that curriculum, right? How oh. do you come with the recommendation system? So yeah, a real world is, problem. Yeah, so the real world, they interact with every data element they have and say, what is relevant for, how do you know this is going to be full? How do you know that's not going to be full? And they have a lot of things they ask and ask questions, which is including things which are very advanced, like seasonality, 
right? Why do you think this? Uh, why do you think this is uh, going to be full? Why? Uh, why is Disney releasing before Thanksgiving? After Thanksgiving? You know, these kind of questions come up. So they're very advanced. They start with a very fundamental, basic, curious, curious question, and they go all the way advanced to building a recommendation system. So that is an example of oh. how, <laughs> uh, how, uh, how, uh, how, uh, you know, how QMath will start teaching, right? Uh, that's an example. It's, is it finalized? No. So don't take my word. I know you're recording this, but oh. don't take my word for this. Yeah. Yeah. This is, but these examples are how they think. 